hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13 developer beta seven was released today. And if you're looking for the public beta or public beta six, expect that to be released later today or more likely tomorrow. This came in at 321 megabytes on my iPhone 10 S max and a similar size on all of these devices, the iPad air two, the iPhone six S plus the SE and the 10 R as well. Now, if you're not seeing this update, you'll have to probably reboot your device. I've had quite a few people tell me they can't see the update reboot. It will probably show up. Let's take a look at the build number. The build number is 17 a five, five, six, five B. And that B means we're getting very close to a final release. Although I do expect a few more betas from week to week before the final release, just like they have in the past. Now, as far as this particular update, there's a lot of little minor tweaks and changes and quite a few things to update you on. So the first thing is there are 31 known issues noted in Apple's notes, and there are nine resolved issues. So we're getting lower and lower on that known issue and resolve issue. Although we do have more resolved issues than we did last time. So that's good. So far it feels nice and fast. We're going to talk about all of the new changes. We'll talk about things they haven't fixed yet. And then we'll talk about performance and battery life at the end. So stick around for that and check the time codes below. If you want to see exactly where they're at. So the first thing has to do with photos. So let's go into photos and in photos, you'll see down at the bottom here, it says all photos. They've brought this back. This previously disappeared. We used to only have years, month, and days, and now we have all photos. So that's nice. They've brought all of that back. The next change is under messages. So if we go into messages, now, if you're in a group text, you already have the little I at the top, but if you don't press on the name here at the top and then hit the little I for info. Now you'll see all the details and all the different photos you might've sent before. These are thumbnails that I was looking at for this particular video. And now we can delete those again, if we haptic or 3d press on them. So 3d press, and we have the delete option. If we hit delete, it says, do you want to delete the attachment? You hit delete attachment and it goes away. So that's nice that they've brought that back. We can delete that again. Now there's a new feature under find my, which is kind of interesting. So if you open up find my. Now at the bottom, make sure you're on the tab that says me. And then the little line here where we can expand the menu, go ahead and expand that up. And then at the bottom, it says help a friend. And now it says open iCloud.com so that others can log in and find their devices from this phone. So now if someone lost their phone, maybe they don't have access to a computer, they can log into iCloud from here to find their own devices. So that's a really nice little feature they've added. Now mail gets a couple new options and mail is actually working a lot better. I've put it back on my devices. If you've noticed here, I was using spark before this, it seems to be working a lot better. There's a couple new options for blocked senders. So if we go into settings and then we scroll down to mail, if you're using the mail app and then scroll down to where it says blocked sender options under blocked sender options, there's a couple new options. So there's none mark is blocked comma leave in inbox and then move to trash. So we have a few new options now if we're using the mail app, it's just a nice little addition and should help if you're using that. Now there's a couple different changes throughout the phone as far as 3d touch or haptic touch. It doesn't really work any differently, but they've changed around some things. So if we go into the control center here and we 3d press or haptic touch on brightness here down at the bottom where it says dark mode, it now just says dark mode off until sunset. It used to have a little bit more lengthy explanation under there. They've just changed it a little bit. And then again, in the control center, if we 3d press or haptic press on notes, they've changed the little icon for a new photo. They just keep refining things and tweaking things. And this is normally things that I don't cover too much, but I just thought I'd show you since there's not a ton of new changes in this update. And then also if you 3d press or haptic press on any of the icons, they've kind of flipped everything over, especially if it's an Apple app or settings or things like that. They've moved rearrange apps to the top and then they've kind of flipped everything over from Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular data and battery. They've just reorganized them. I don't know why they felt the need to do that, but they did. So you can do that the same on Instagram. It's all at the top now, rearrange apps. So everything's just kind of flipped for some reason. Now in beta seven under the activity app, you'll see, I don't have any movement or anything because I forgot to put my Apple watch on today. But if we take a look at the trends tab, you'll see, it says your trends need some attention, focus on closing your rings each day to get things back on track. You've got this Aaron. And what it's doing is giving advice for each one of these trends based on it trending down. It's telling me how to bring it back. So for stand or move or exercise, you'll see, it says, 
This arrow needs some love, Aaron. Try to burn at least 444 calories a day to turn things around. So it's giving advice based on it trending down. Now, of course, if I had my watch on, I probably wouldn't have each one of these filled out. Now, something else they've changed here as well is they've removed the stairs climbed for actual trends. So stairs climb and trends is missing for some reason. Hopefully they bring it back with a future beta, but it's not there this time. And thanks to iSpeedTest OS on Twitter for actually sharing a couple of these changes. And he also shared with me, since I don't have this, test flight. So test flight is actually a beta app. I've used it in the past to test out beta apps that aren't released in the app store yet. But one thing they've changed or added is you'll see, you have the ability to share feedback directly with developers. And there's this new little screenshot ability and the actual image that it's showing here. So it says, take a screenshot and send it to a developer directly from this beta, start testing or learn more. So they've updated this as well. And that's really nice. Now also in settings, there's something new under phone. So if we go to settings and then we go down to phone and then we go down to silence, unknown callers, there's a little blurb under here that says incoming calls will continue to ring from people in your contacts, recent outgoing calls and Siri suggestions. So it's just a new little blurb, better explaining what silence unknown callers does. And this is a great feature. If you don't know who it's from, it silences it and doesn't take up your phone. It's a nice little change there. And that is it for the major changes throughout this particular version. Now I expect this to be much more refined, but let's go over a few more bug fixes that they've actually fixed in this version. And the first has to do with wallpapers. So if we go into settings, then wallpaper, then choose new wallpaper, you'll see here, it says all photos now, since we have that in photos, but also dynamic photos or dynamic wallpapers now work properly. So they show up, they actually work they'll turn on and do their thing when they're selected and they're working properly. And this feels much faster than it did before. So everything that you move around in here just feels much faster settings in general folders. If you haven't noticed are back to normal. So they are transparent or translucent, but they're less translucent or less transparent. So you'll see when they're expanded, they look the same, but if we shrink them back down, they stand out more because they've tweaked the transparency of it again. So it's sort of back to how it was in the previous beta with beta five at this point. Now iMessage sync is not working well across different devices. Still, that's probably something they still have to fix. And then also that three finger gesture that was driving everyone nuts, especially on iPads or people playing games. You used to be able to activate that by tapping three fingers anywhere in the OS. They've fixed this and changed it so that maybe you're in a note here. Now, if you're in notes and you're on a screen where the keyboard is present and you three finger tap, you get the menu at the top. So they've fixed this. It's only present now when you're in a dialogue that has the keyboard present. So if you're at the home screen again, it won't show up. So while you're in a game, it won't drive you nuts. The only time it will show up is when you're in some place where you enter text and that's true of messages and everywhere else. There's no other specific changes to the iPad though. And also there's a couple things they haven't fixed yet, such as shortcuts. The automation tab is still not there. So they haven't brought that back yet. They will bring it back, but it's still not there. They've also fixed the dark mode where it darkens the wallpaper in the background. So you'll see it changes. If I turn it on, the background's darker. Now turn it back off it lightens up. So that feature is back, which is really nice. Now, one thing they've fixed is with do not disturb. So do not disturb here actually syncs again with your watch. So this will sync from the iPhone back to the watch. So they've made that work properly again. Now, someone actually found a file within this particular code of iOS 13 beta seven that points at a date of September 10th for an Apple event. So that's something they found. It looks like we may have an Apple event on Tuesday, September 10th. We don't know that for sure yet until the invites go out, but I just thought I'd bring that up. Now let's talk about Ram management, battery life performance, and then the Geekbench scores. So as far as Ram management goes, as far as apps reloading themselves, the only problem I've had so far is with Twitter. So if I open up say three to five apps at this point, it seems like things like Twitter will reload. Everything else seems to be working just fine. So I don't know if it's much better, but on all the standard apps, it just seems to stay open. So it looks like they may have fixed a lot of that. Now, battery life on my main device that I use all the time seems to be okay. As far as the previous beta, I'm hoping it gets a little bit better since there's a lot more refinements in this one, but over the past 10 days, you'll see the last three days have been pretty consistent. 
about four to four and a half hours of battery life or screen on time while I'm using the device with about 30% battery life left at the end of the day. So I normally say about six and a half hours and one to two hours of screen off time seem to be pretty average for me. And the battery health on this device is 100%. So that just gives you the best case scenario on the 10 S max. It seems to be pretty good. Battery will improve when it gets closer to the final release and all of the code is really finalized. So it seems to be getting better and better. Now, as far as performance on my iPhone 10 S max, you've been seeing it. It's quite good, nice and smooth. And let's take a look at some of the older devices. Now the 10 R is not older, but it has the same performance, the same haptic or 3d touch options are here as well. So everything is the same there, but on the older devices, such as the iPhone 6 S plus again, performance is quite good. I had a review of iOS 13 the other day, an early review, and it seems to be really good, super fast, super smooth. And like I said in that video, there's not really a reason to update your phone if you're happy with it because things are quite smooth. If you're unhappy with the camera, then maybe you'll want to. But speaking of the camera, first time I've opened it on this particular version, let's open the TV app. Again, it's the first time I've opened it on this particular update. And it's pretty good there. And music. Again, scrolling is nice and fast. No issues there on the iPhone SE. We should have similar results. Again, scrolling is nice and fast. If we scroll down and you'll see it's nice and quick. Again, first time I've opened the camera on this since installing the update, the same is true of music and all of these were closed. So I could run a benchmark with Geekbench. So nice and fast in everything we do, including games. And many people want to know if Fortnite is working well. I haven't played a long game of it, so you'll have to check with maybe some people in the comments, hopefully have that information. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. Geekbench scores on my iPhone 10 S max are pretty good. 4,835 for single core, 11,381 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, I ran this particular benchmark twice first when I restarted the device and then a little bit later and it sped up. So you'll see compared to the previous beta, which is right here on August 7th, we are a little bit faster in both benchmarks, both single core and multi-core. Now let me lay out the rest of these so you can get an idea of all of the other devices and we'll take a look at those. Now from the left to right, we have the iPad air two, we have the iPhone SE, the iPhone six S plus the iPhone 10 R and then the iPhone 10 S max. So hopefully that gives you a general idea of what your benchmarks should be. That's it for everything in iOS 13 beta seven, a lot of little tweaks and changes, and I'm really glad to see them making a press forward this time where things are much better. It seems at least in the initial couple of hours that I've used it since it's been out, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If I find anything else, I'll do another video. And of course I'll do a follow up like I do every week. Be sure to check back for that usually on Sunday or Monday, depending on when the public beta is released. If you want to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.